one mistake that new Jira administrators make is to get confused between statuses and uh, resolutions when it comes to configuring the workflows. Now, let me open one of the workflow and uh, I'll try to explain what I mean. So when you go to the workflow section, you can take a look at all the workflows. If I open one of the workflow, let us say copy of TT task management workflow, I'll just click on the edit. So we can take a look at the workflow in uh, edit mode. Now, in Jira workflow, you have uh, states and you have transitions. I guess uh, that is uh, very clear and we all know how it works. Now, basically, when you have uh, transitions, uh, these transitions will basically take you from one status to another status. And uh, when you create a new transition, you basically are saying that your issue will now move to a different state. Now, state or status in Jira workflow is nothing but uh, uh, where that issue is in its life cycle. So if you start the issue, or if you create an issue, it will be in, let us say, to do. Now from to do, it will probably move to, uh, let us say, approved or in progress or whatever status. And from that status, it will move to a different uh, status. So basically, it will keep on uh, moving from one state to another state, depending upon, of course, uh, what user is trying to do with that particular issue. And that is basically your, 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 uh, your process. So you basically map your process in Jira using these workflows. Now, I'll probably open a different workflow just to explain how uh, it will work. So let us say you start a new, you create a new activity or issue. It will be in to-do. It, it will then move to maybe draft. Then someone will review it, then you will approve it, and then it, it will be published. So if, if you look at this workflow, the final state is published. And that is very clear. But there is also something called as a resolution. Now, in Jira, usually if you let us say resolve an issue, let me show you one, one, one issue, I'll, I'll try to resolve it. And uh, let us see how it looks like. Now we are looking at one bug. And uh, this bug uh, is, uh, I, I believe we are looking at a next gen project, let me open a normal project. So it will be simpler to explain. I'm not using the example of next gen project because uh, next gen projects work uh, slightly differently and I have made a lot of videos on that. So if you look at this particular uh, board, this, this board also represents a workflow because you're moving the issue from to do to in progress. Then from in progress, you may want to move it to done. And the moment you move the issue to done, basically you're, you're doing a transition. You will notice that if you look at the issue key, there is a strike through. And if you open this in uh, maybe um, a diff maybe in a different window, or if you take a look at this issue, let me just open the issue and uh, let us take a look at the issue itself. So there is the, the resolution is uh, done and this resolution is not the status. And this resolution can be something else. Maybe it can be not done. It could, it can be not fixed. It can be duplicate. So if you, let us say, are working on a bug. Now, when you receive a new bug, you start the work on it. You will start finding the fix for it. You will then uh, resolve it. And while you're resolving the issue, while you're moving the, the, the issue from in progress to done, you're basically saying that there is no further work required on that particular bug. So basically, this is the final status of that particular issue, unless you reopen it in case uh, you have to re reopen it. Now, it doesn't always mean that the bug was resolved. Let us say you receive a bug, you start the work on it, and then you realize that you can't do it, you, you can't fix it. So basically, you can say that although you finish the work, 
but the final resolution is not fixed because maybe maybe you were not able to fix it or maybe you can fix it in 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 a version in the next version similarly when you receive a bug the bug may be duplicate you still did some work you spend maybe 5 minutes looking at the bug description but uh, when you resolve the, resolve the bug you can or when you move the issue to done column you can still update the resolution field as uh, maybe duplicate or uh, not fixed or whatever so resolution uh, basically tells you the outcome of uh, that particular issue and status tells you where that particular issue is in the life cycle of uh, uh the workflow or basically its life cycle now these two things uh, are different and i'm talking about these two things status and resolution is because when people move from uh, a different tool to jira they usually mix up both of them they create uh, different uh, states like uh, duplicate fixed not fixed um and many other resolutions that are actually resolution but they are not really status so the only advice that i can give you that when you are designing your workflow in the beginning spend some time looking at uh, uh, how you can map those uh, existing processes that you may have to jira because in jira you do have uh, a resolution field and this resolution field is very important because uh, based on this resolution your reports are affected so maybe you did some work but the resolution was uh, uh, set so the moment you set the resolution it means that uh, uh, that is it there is no further work required and there are reports like created versus resolved and a uh, uh, lot of other reports Are are actually using and looking for the resolution field, and that is why it is always a good idea to set it. Uh, and when you when you set the resolution, you can do it using post function or using uh, maybe the board configuration. When the when when you move the issue from uh, in progress to done, let me show you. If you look at one of your board, and if you go to the board settings, there is usually an option to set the resolution when you go to the columns and. Uh, when you look at the column here the configuration of the column actually basically you're saying that the done status is mapped to the done column but when you move the issue to done please set the resolution and tick to set the resolution to done and basically it it will help you in uh, in making sure the reports are not disturbed and uh, when you're looking at the reports you can clearly identify all the issues that that were raised and how many issues were basically uh resolved or not resolved or whatever i mean the, the the whole idea here is that you are trying to identify that there was a final outcome <laughs> on that particular issue on that particular bug on that particular story so don't uh, create uh, too many statuses in your workflow use resolution field if you are uh, if if your workflow workflow has like 10 15 status then i think you need to think about it try to optimize the usage of uh, statuses try to keep it simple so that it makes sense use self transitions in case uh, you have to go through the same status M- maybe the issue status need not to be changed but you still need to do something for example i made a video on uh, approvals where i talked about these uh, self transitions loops Uh, where you can see that if you are waiting for an for an approval, so you need an approval, but the status is not changing, so you are waiting for something. So the moment you get the approval, then you can expose the next transition using uh, the conditions. So with the help of uh, these conditions and with the help of uh, different uh, fields that you can capture from the user while you are making a transition, you can do a lot of won- wonderful things and. Uh, It, it requires i agree in the beginning it may not be very obvious if you are coming from a different tool if you are uh, if you are new to jira and that is why i am trying to help you that is why i am trying to uh, to to basically show you different things amazing things that you can do with your uh, with your jira instance and do spend time on the workflow part on the workflow part in the beginning uh, because uh, 
if you create a complex workflow, first of all, it will be difficult for the users. Second, if you create a workflow with different statuses, then you will end up having too many statuses and that is also not really ideal. You should try to optimize the usage of custom fields, statuses as much as you can. There is no, I don't think if, when you're designing a workflow, there is a there is a number, like you should not have more than X number of statuses. I mean, you can have more than X number of statuses that X could be, I think, uh, I think if you're within 10, that is in my opinion, all right. But I believe at last recommendation is seven. So I, I also agree. I think if you're somewhere between like, I think three to 10, I think that is fine. But if you have like 20 statuses, I've seen workflows with 20 statuses and will like so many transitions and it is absolutely a nightmare for her, the user who is trying to do something. I, I think eventually your users will be using the tool and you should keep it simple. You should keep it intuitive for them. And also for you, if you make a complex workflow, if you do some complex configurations, it will also be difficult for you, the person who created the, uh, created the workflow uh, to troubleshoot. And imagine someone who has uh, taken your place, maybe you are an administrator, but you are now maybe changing a job or maybe you are doing something else now. You may have other people looking after your Jira instance. They will get confused and it is absolutely difficult. It, it is really difficult to fix things when, when you're looking at a complex configuration. So keep it simple. And uh, one tip that I wanted to give you today was uh, the usage of resolution and statuses. They are not same. They are different and use them wisely. And that is all I wanted to talk about uh, in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much.